Welcome everybody. We're glad you're here on a, a Halloween Friday afternoon. Um, I'm sure Annie's got a lot of wonderful things to share with us. Um, if you want a certificate for your attendance uh, in this session, we will be posting a link uh, at the end of the session and just make sure that you complete that survey. Uh, it will request information regarding the name you want on your certificate, so make sure you put the whole name and what you want and the email where you want it sent. There's also a place for if you have additional questions or additional topics that you've <laughs> covered, um, you can add that to the survey. So we are so glad that Annie is here. Um, she's just doing some amazing things, and uh, I'm sure you're going to learn a lot today. So without any further ado, welcome Annie. Hi guys. Um, I tried to keep this one, you know, short and sweet so that we could all get out and get to trick or treating and Halloween parties and such. Um, Libby, just just because sometimes I don't I don't see them pop up. Just let me know if there's any any questions or anything, and I'll answer those. Um, but here we are back at telepracticing for October. Um, I know we're all you know kind of still on our virtual learning curve and our learning curve with Teams, but. Um, I have some new information and we've figured out a couple more things, so I hope I can help you guys, you know, make your virtual sessions go a little bit more smoothly. Okay, so the agenda for today, we're going to go over guest access and giving control of your screen on Teams using an external monitor, um, a couple of web extensions, and document cameras. So I know, um, you know, everybody's huge gripe with with teams is that you don't have that interaction like you do with zoom or other platforms and not being able to give control of your screen the um short answer to this is that it is possible to give control of your screen it is still not as functional as zoom but it is possible and we're going to go over that today and again like we always do our little recap of making sure your proper connections making sure all of your software is updated now that we're all using um, all of these platforms, all of the apps, um, the, you know, the different kind of web-based software type things, so important to make sure everything is updated. They're, they're doing tons of updates now as more and more people are on, you know, virtual school. So make sure if you have problems, always go back and make sure everything has been updated. Um, of course, making sure you have your working equipment, having your space ready, having your materials and your equipment handy in case you need to refocus quickly. And like I always say, talk to other people, talk to other professionals and see what's been working for them. And always use the team site and make ask people questions, bounce your ideas of other people. And if you get any fun tips or tricks or anything, let us know. Because I feel like a lot of the things we have found is just like our therapists or other therapists I work with that are just playing around with things. So if you happen onto something, please let us all know what, what you found. Okay, so allowing guest access on team. You can give students remote access if you have permission to do so. And this is the big, big if, if you have to do so. So your administrator that is the head of your organization has to give you this permission. So that I believe that would just be the Department of Ed, you know, administration, hopefully they can you guys to do that and you will have that access this will allow your students to click on your screen does not work with touch um, touch screens so if they have an ipad or a tablet without the keyboard without a track they're still not going to be able to touch your screen and not to be able to click on your screen you have to have a mouse trackpad can't hear you anymore. I thought it was just me, Kay. <laughs> I can't hear it either. Libby, can you hear? I cannot. Annie, we've lost your sound. Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Actually, something going on with this mic. 
All right. So where what was the last thing that you heard? About having to use the mouse. OK, so they're going to need to use a mouse or um, a trackpad. Um, <clears throat> it does not work with a touch screen. So if you have like a phone or an iPad, even if you're logged onto your computer and you share your tablet, you still they still cannot click on that. If that makes sense. Um, let me see. And you also cannot share remote access on an iPad. So if you're just solely on your iPad doing your telesession and you want to give them remote access, you cannot do that on a tablet or an iPad. Um, there are web extensions and apps that will allow you to annotate. That is the other kind of gripe I think people have is not being able to annotate on Teams and not being able to mark anything or, or um, you know, to help keep attention. And we have found some web extensions and apps that do, do allow for that, and we're going to go over that as well. Um, again, just want you to remember that you have to get permission first to allow for guest control. <clears throat> so that's always step one. OK, so when you share your screen, you're going to see a bar pop up at the top and this will say give control. When you click on that, you should see the name of the student below or however they're signing in. Um, when you give them access, you're going to be able to see both mouses on the screens and they will have initials or pictures, whatever they use beside them. And again, you have to have permission to share control. So I have a couple pictures here where you can see, um, you know, I was sharing this worksheet and I this give control popped up and I see Rhea Dyer here. So when I click Rhea Dyer, that's going to give her control. Now this little bar pops up really quickly. So when you share and you have permission to do this, it'll pop up really quickly and go away. That doesn't mean that that's the only time you can share it. Um, on my computer, if I hover towards the top of the screen, that little um, bar will come back down. So don't think that you have to share and stop share 100 times to get that bar to pop back up. If you just hover up there, it'll come right back down. So I have noticed too in Teams, there's a little bit of a lag. So um, I've tried this on different networks and everything. So I, I really think it's just teams that whenever you share, it'll you'll have a little bit of a lag, then they'll pop up. And there's some times that, you know, their mouse will have a little bit of a lag. So just keep that in mind. But after they're they're controlling, you can see that I have my mouse here. Her mouse is there. There's Rhea and then she can click on that screen. Again, just clicking. I don't I don't have any markers or anything. She's just able to click, but um, it will be reactive on your computer. So if she would click, you know, a, a button to X out or whatever. It would do that on, on your computer. Um, I will say the one thing that I like about Teams with this sharing is that you both have your own mouse. So on Zoom, whenever you share, you know, you just have the one mouse and, it, you know, sometimes if you go to move it, the kids can move it back or whatever. This one, you each have separate control of your mouse, which I really like, which is helpful. So this also works with PowerPoint. So we've talked a lot about the interactive PowerPoints and sharing those with kids. And whenever you give your whenever you're sharing your PowerPoint and you give guest access or control, you can open that PowerPoint and they can work PowerPoint and write on it. So this will make using interactive PowerPoints much, much easier. You'll, you still have to use a mouse though. So if you have like a writing worksheet or something and you want them to use their finger, they're not going to be able to do that. They can just draw with their mouse. But this kind of eliminates the step of, you know, if you sending it to them and having them open it and share it with you, if you can give them access to it, you can control it on your screen and they can write on that. So I shared a little video here of, of a PowerPoint. Let me make this a little bit bigger. So this was a PowerPoint I showed you guys last time with the, you know, the handwriting and the um, one that I made. So you can see I'm just going to give her control. Let me see she's down there. <clears throat> there she is. She can click on a pen and then she can write on that. 
So that will make these type of situations much easier on teams, um, you know, much easier to interact with them. And you still have to kind of be careful, though, because, again, when you give them control, they have control of, of everything right there. <clears throat> Okay, so the other thing with, with annotation, where, you know, with Teams we have whiteboard, but we really don't have that ability to write on anything or to, to write on um, websites or things like that. Annotate the web, and there's there's many of these. I've, I've looked at a lot of them. Um, there's like Epic Pen and, you know, different types of annotation um, extensions and add-ons. This one's called Annotate the Web. I thought it was like one of the easiest. Um, you can just download this as a Google Chrome extension. And as you guys know, your extensions on Google Chrome are up there in that right hand corner, like a little puzzle piece. And when you click on that, that opens up all of your extensions. This will allow you to annotate websites or whatever you're sharing on your desktop. Um, it can be helpful for you if you're just trying to show them something or if you're you know, maybe going through a story or something and you want to underline or highlight or whatever you need to do. But also, when you give control of your screens, the students can also use this extension. So whenever we tried this, um, like let's say you have a website open and you want them to mark on it, they have to click one time on your screen and then they have to pick a pen. So once they pick a pen, then they can write on there and you can both see it. Um, make sure you test these out first before you use it in a session. I have noticed that some of these are a little glitchy with, um, with with when you're sharing or what you see. Sometimes you can see them, but they can't see them. So with this one, this was the one I found that you both can see it whenever you're sharing your screen, even if they're not interacting and doing it, if you're just doing it. Some of those, only you can see them. So be like I said, be sure you kind of test it out with someone else and log on with them to make sure that you can both see them. Anna, you have a question okay. about, about across computers. Like if one person has a Mac and the other one has uh, a Windows computer. Um, I believe it'll work. So usually, I mean, because this is a Google Chrome extension, it's not really like a Mac um, app or like a, a PC Windows type of app. And, you know, that's kind of critical for these type of things that you know, I can download Mac apps that a PC is not going to see or they're going to have certain extensions that are just programmed for PCs or Windows. You want to make sure if you're using like Google Chrome or something, that's just going to be for everything. You know, the, those type of platforms are built for all types of computers. But still, check it out first because there's sometimes, like, you know, even if you try it 10 times, there's still sometimes it might be a little glitchy or you find one instance it doesn't work. Um, you know, again, like these are all kind of workarounds for, for teams and everything. Um, so you want to make sure that you, you test it out first before using it with a student and you find out it doesn't work in the middle of the session. But so far, everything I've tested it with has has worked. And we typically try to test it with a PC and a Mac and, you know, a tablet and everything else to kind of, um, <clears throat> you know, simulate everybody that would use it. I've also found, and I know that you guys that are that are eSchool Docs users know that with Microsoft platforms, so Teams, Outlook, OneDrive, anything that's a Microsoft platform, the Safari is glitchy. So Safari does not support the Microsoft platform since 2016. Why? I don't know. But if you use Google Chrome or Microsoft Edge, they're going to be way less glitchy with everything Microsoft. So I have I have always and I know that, you know, whenever I'm sharing a screen or whatever, that's not necessarily Microsoft, but I just use Google, Google Chrome and Edge all the time. I, I just think they're way less glitchy and they have way less problems. <clears throat> OK, so something else um, that's been really helpful for me and a lot of other people I've talked to is using an external monitor. And I know that this is an extra cost and, you know, I try to stay away from things that are an extra cost. Like, you know, we talked about the mirror reflecting apps that you can buy for screen sharing on iPads or devices. You know, those work just as well, but, you know, obviously we're all not trying to spend a ton of money. Um, but these are, an external monitor is one of those things that 
once you have one, you don't know how you survived without it, even just every day of just documenting or, you know, doing paperwork and everything. Um, I can legitimately say that I use mine every single day and I, I love it. Um, so whenever you're screen sharing in Teams, you cannot see your guest or your student. And um, if you use an external monitor, you can also see them while you're sharing your screen. So typically um, I put whatever I'm sharing up on my screen because it's bigger. And then whenever I put, I still keep my student on my, um, on my laptop so I can see them as well. Because I think it, it really is hard whenever you're sharing your screen and, and such that if you cannot see your student, you can't see are they paying attention, or are they engaged, you know, what's going on, or are they are they doing this exercise the right way? So you, that's really critical that we still have to see them while we're doing this. And um, we, we've had some questions like, can we just split the screens and use them that way? You can, but it's just much smaller. You know, a, a typical laptop is like 13 to 15 inches. That's a really small screen to um, you know, split it. <clears throat> I I found external monitors for as cheap as like sixty dollars. Of course, they go up to just you know thousands of dollars. The one that I'm using in this video cost one hundred and twenty, and I've had it for a few years now. And like I said, I I use it every single day, and um, I I think they're really really helpful with virtual therapy. So in this um, video, this is my older sister. She's a speech therapist, so you'll hear her say um, like S sounds and things like that. And this is her daughter, Eileen. So we have permission to do this. And she's sharing a, a website on on Teams with her. So obviously, Eileen can see this website. She can see her. She's sharing her screen. If she gave her guest access to this, she could click on her her screen. So um, you know, if they're playing Uno, she could easily click her own cards and engage that way. So I'm going to go ahead and play this video for you guys. So you can see her sharing her screen here. Do you see my game? Yeah. Okay. Listen, I want you to show me a good S sound. Yeah, just say. Good job. OK, let's dish out a card. <laughs> yeah, actually. OK, so you can see on there we got a little more interaction. Um, for example, like I have one student who who loves matching games and we can do like a couple tasks and then we can do like a little small grid of, of matching games. So this again just kind of helps that interaction and in keeping their attention. OK, so the last thing I wanted to talk about was is document cameras. So this has also been really helpful for me, um, you know, with with handwriting and things like that. Um, it, it's difficult whenever I'm trying to show them specifically how to form a letter, how to you know hold your pencil, or how to do this, or how to do that, or how what line I want you to cut on. It's been difficult to either switch cameras, switch, um, you know, even though I have this like little conference cam that I can move around it still is kind of shifting that attention back and forth, if that makes sense, where you know, hey, we're over here, then we're over here, then we're over here moving the camera around. So I've been using a document camera and I, I really, really like it. These are great for sharing, um, you know, worksheets, books, anything that's not digital. You know, I know a lot of us have our own equipment or if we have, you know, manipulatives that we that we want to show them. Um, it's it's really kind of hard to to do that with um, with virtual therapy. I think like this has made it a lot easier. It's also a lot easier um, if you're like I said trying to show them something specific that you need to use your hands or like really get up close to show them. Um, and, or like cards. Like I know I have like little yoga gorilla um, yoga cards that I can just put that card down and show them if I don't have a digital copy of it or or whatever. I um, personally use Osmo and I picked up Osmo whenever we kind of started virtual therapy and I've been using it. And I, I really, really like Osmo. And the thing I like about it too, is that 
Um, it's also a great therapy tool. So it has this document camera feature on it, also a great therapy tool. So it's not like you're just buying a document camera or spending money on that. And I mean, from my opinion, they're they're really not crazy expensive. Like I, I would think what for what they are, they would be way more expensive than they are. Um, and they pair with iPads or um, Fire tablets. So this is a picture of Osmo and you just have this base here and this little red camera. So, you know, you just use your tablet, your iPad, um, you know, your um, Kindle Fire, whatever it is. And, you know, you can just take that base with you. There's nothing electronic about that base. It just has a little reflector in that red piece that goes on the top. And then you have your base where you stand your iPad up on the bottom. So as you can see, you know, you can use this with, it says like Zoom and Skype and more. You can definitely use this with Teams. A little more difficult with Teams, but you can still share your screen the way that you share your iPad um, before. Or, and you can see there on the second picture where they are writing, you know, in real time and they can see that, um, you know, or you can remove it for face-to-face -face interaction. And if you go to playosmo.com, there are, you can see like all of the games, all of the, um, activities that they have there. Um, the thing I like about Osmo too is that, you know, for the kids that I use them, I use it with on site, it's not just solely on an iPad. You still have manipulatives, you still have like a component to it that really, it's almost like the iPad reinforces it. So if I have little letter builders or, you know, like tangrams, like something like that, where they can build it on the table and when they get it right, you know, then Mo the Monster comes on and, you know, tells them they did a great job. And, you know, I've I've really enjoyed working with it. And I feel like it's one of those things, too, that I can keep consistent if I'm using them on site and they know Osmo and they know Mo the Monster. And then if we go virtual and I see them remotely, you know, they still have Mo the Monster and they still have Osmo and they're familiar with it. So, like I said, I, I really like Osmo, but... There are tons of document cameras. There's tons of ways to do this. I've even seen people put their phone camera on a stand and, and share their phone to where the, you know, your phone is your document camera. There are tons of ways to do that. And I, I think it's a really beneficial therapy tool. So I um, just added some links here from just a couple little fall, you know, teletherapy activities, ideas. They have some good links in here. Um, they have worksheets and things like that, that, you know, we, we've been using all along, but, you know, I feel like as, as we go on and on with this, like if you go to like teachers pay teachers or, you know, a lot of these, these other sites, they have a ton of resources now because a lot of people are selling their, you know, their activities or whatever. So, you know, just because we, we've been doing this a while, don't forget to keep revisiting these websites, revisit these, um, places for more resources and more blogs and everything that they're they're adding stuff every single day. All right, so the next telepracticing is going to be November 20th. Um, I also want to remind you guys, you know, feel free to check out this the speech therapy telepracticing recordings too. They have access to those too, don't they, Libby? They do. They do. Huh? Yes. 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 You know, so you know, even though they are speech therapy based, a lot of the times we present different things and, um, you know, be sure to check those out as well, because there's a lot of useful tips there, there too. Um, I think for next time, I'm really going to research a lot of these web extensions and things that we can add on to actual websites that will, you know, help us a little bit with, um, you know, kind of overcoming some of the challenges of teams. So that's what you guys can look forward to for next time. And hold on one second. I just forgot that I, I have a video of the, of the annotate and I forgot to add it in here. Okay, so let me see if I can share this. All right, can you guys see this video here? Yes, yes. Okay, 
So this is what, um, oh wait, no, this is the PowerPoint, is it? No, no, I'm sorry, this is the wrong video. Well, never mind. Um, so I, I had a little video clip of using the uh, annotate, um, like the, the web version of it. Let me see if I can pull up Google Chrome here and you guys can see it. Okay, so you guys can see my uh, my screen now. So right up here in this little puzzle piece, you see I have annotate um, the web here, and then this comes up here. So I can pick a pin, I can pick a color, um, you know, I can pick the size that I want, and I can draw on this. And then if I give them access to it, they can do the same. So if you pulled up a website, they would be able to annotate your website. And I, I have tested this with Teams to be on a Teams meeting and that and both parties can see it. It works for both. So like I said, this is the one that I have seen that I think um, really works the best so far that I have found. And you can see there on Teams, like I said, there's always like a little bit of a, a lag sometimes. So just be cognizant of that. But when they when you share their screen, when you click and then they pick their pin, they're able to use these pins too. So do you guys have any questions or anything right now? Like I said, I try to keep it short and sweet today because I know everybody has a lot of stuff going on today. I'm not got any, any questions. questions. Be sure if you have any, you know, any more questions or anything you'd like for us to explore more or whatever, please put that in Teams and we can, you know, add them into these presentations. And just a reminder too, if you want to add messages in Teams, use the at symbol and then OTPT team. Mm -hmm. um, will pop up so you can get everybody will get a notice that, that something's been posted in our Teams group. Yes, and I've put the uh, the link to the survey. If you want a certificate for today's session, uh, complete that survey. Um, there's also an additional question for you to be able to um, indicate any other topics you'd like covered or any other questions that you have from today.